Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Zach's Credit Card Guide. We've got a couple interesting stories to talk about this week, so let's jump right into it. The first is kind of my experience recently with retention offers, or should I say the lack thereof. I've had a couple of the cards that I've picked up, mostly for sign-up bonuses, come up for their annual fees here in the past couple months. Most recently I had the Delta Gold Amex, the business card, as well as the Business American Airlines from Barclays. So just recently I've had those two come up for an annual fee. They don't bring me much ongoing value to hang on to, especially right now when I'm not particularly interested in traveling. So I called up to cancel them. I wasn't really sure what I would do if they did give me a retention offer. I'd probably take it because usually it makes sense even if you have to pay an annual fee. And that's what happened to me last year with the Chase Southwest business. I called in to cancel it and they said, what if we just give you a credit for the annual fee? So I said, sure, I may as well do that, especially because that one gives you points every year when you renew, so it was free points, so I kept that one. But this time, both with the Amex Delta Gold business and the Barclays business American Airlines card, in both cases I said, yeah, hey, I just want to cancel the card. It's not really giving me any value. I'm not traveling right now, which is true. And I was kind of expecting in at least one case to get, hey, you know, what if we waive the annual fee or what, you know, even in something small. In both cases, they were like, okay, done. Do you have any questions? And I was like, uh, no, I guess not. You know what I mean? So in both cases, now this was only two cards, but absolutely nothing. They just went ahead and just canceled it without a fight. Now, on both cards... I didn't put a lot of spend, really not much at all. My Amex cards I have been using more recently, but the Delta one just didn't make any sense to put spending on that one specifically. And the Barkley American Airlines, I haven't touched it since I hit the sign up bonus, mostly because like I said, it just doesn't give ongoing value and it's not really a competitive card. So they might have just looked at it as, well, he doesn't use the card anyway, he's not worth keeping. I don't know what the thought process is. I don't know if the ongoing drama has anything to do with it. But like I said, in both cases, no retention offer. So one of the questions I have for you guys in this video is what has been your experience with retention offers, especially here this year, lately? Have you been getting any offers? Do they just let you cancel cards? What has been your guys' experience? Let everybody know down below while you're watching the rest of the video. Our second story this week is talking about WOW Airlines. You guys might remember them. They were real big on the travel scene in like 2017 to 2019 when they declared bankruptcy and kind of went out of business. This affected a lot of people. There were some earlier warning signs, kind of like a volcano. There's some tremors right before the eruption. For those who were watching the space, there was reason to be concerned with WOW Air, but a lot of people had tickets. You know, you might book a vacation several months out, so if you've already got a ticket, you're gonna go, right? Well, if you remember, WOW Airlines just suddenly declared bankruptcy. They sent out emails, they updated their website, they said, hey, we're, we're done. And there were people like on trips in the middle of their vacations, like in France or wherever over in Europe, like if you're American and vice versa, there were people like in the middle of their trips who were screwed. Now, a lot of other airlines kind of came to the rescue and they had like way cheap fares to help people out, kind of a goodwill gesture. Maybe you remember them next time you want to travel. So there was a lot of airlines that were like doing like $50 tickets to get you home if you were affected by this. So people were eventually able to get home, but still there was probably that momentary sense of panic of like, what do we do now? I, at the time, had a ticket for a future flight to go back to Scotland and that got canceled. Now I ended up getting my money back because I was able to dispute it through my credit card with Chase and they were able to file the dispute successfully. I got a full refund from Chase. I don't know what happened after that, but that was very lucky for me. And I had flown on WOW twice already, and it was a pretty decent experience. You couldn't beat the fares, especially to get from like the east coast of the US over to Europe. I took them to Ireland and to Scotland, and it was great. It was pretty bare bones. You don't get a lot, but I'm not particularly fussy when I fly. I can make it, especially if I'm getting a decent enough ticket. I really don't care. I don't need a TV in the back of the seat. I'll bring my own snacks. I'll set up my iPad. I'll be good. Because I think when we flew, I think it was like four, maybe 500 bucks to get from like Newark over to Dublin or Edinburgh or something like that, which is dirt cheap for a transatlantic flight. So they went out of business for a lot of reasons. It was kind of the perfect storm. They were really starting to grow. They had just bought a bunch of new planes, but then gas prices, like aviation fuel prices, more than doubled. 
and they were still investing. They were in those first few years of growth where you know, profit margins, you might be operating at a loss or like razor thin margins anyway, but you're trying to grow and eventually become more profitable. So they were still in those stages. So they were kind of on rocky ground anyway. But like I said, then they had bought a bunch of new airplanes and then fuel prices more than doubled. And they were doing that low cost model anyway. So again, profit margins were really thin. A lot of bad stuff happened and they had to just kind of throw in the towel. Well, it looks like it might not be the end for them. It looks like they are operating cargo flights and way earlier this year, they put out some kind of teasers on their official Facebook page. They had a post back in February that they were going to be coming back into the marketplace. And even in some of the comments, their official like Facebook account was replying saying, yes, we are selling tickets soon. Now this is February. What happened really in like February, March? all of the drama, right? So maybe that's why we haven't heard from them right now because any airline, especially one with, you know, past financial difficulties anyway, they'd be nuts to try to get into the game right now. So I imagine that they're just kind of waiting. They're probably doing cargo flights right now to keep the planes running and get some revenue going. And then I bet as soon as all of the drama settles down, as soon as vaccines are out and everybody's traveling again, I bet they come back to the scene, which is really exciting because a lot of those fares, again, from like East Coast of the US over to Europe, you couldn't beat them and it made a lot of sense to fly them. So I do hope that they come back to the scene. Another question for you guys, did you ever fly WOW Air? What was your experience? Do you like the low cost carriers? Can you just get by with your butt in a seat and that's it? Or do you need to fly up in first class? Let everybody know down below. Our last story this week is talking about some new updated rules to how debt collectors can contact you. Now, I do recommend before you get into this credit card game to be debt free. If you can help it, it was one of the best financial decisions I ever made was to just focus on clearing out all of my debt besides a house, of course, but clearing out all of that. I just think that's a good financial move. You can do whatever you want, but if you have made some mistakes in the past and you do have something on your collections, and you do have collections on your report, there are some changes to how the debt collection agencies can get in contact with you. Now, previously, a lot of people might, or if you're lucky, might not be familiar with how they can contact you in the past. It's typically like letters through the mail, but also phone. They would call you sometimes incessantly, and the rules are that they can call you up to seven times per week, which is convenient, one time per day, per debt account. And that's how often they can contact you. And like I said, typically it's just over the phone. They'll call you like right when you sit down to eat dinner, right? Well, now there's some new updated rules that they can text you and contact you through social media. So again, if you have one of these old stinky debts out there, you might get an unsolicited message on Facebook or who knows where else from a debt collection agency. Now, there are a couple thoughts that I have on this. First is you should pay off your debts. If you can help it, again, stuff happens, people make mistakes, I get it. But try to just pay this stuff off. It'll look better on your credit report. These people won't harass you because a lot of them are pretty unethical and downright scummy sometimes, but that's how it is. So the best way is just to avoid being in this position altogether. But the other thing is if they do start to contact you, I've got a couple thoughts on this. So one, Obviously, I think it is a little bit more susceptible to fraud. Now there might be people, the ones who used to call us and try to sell us car warranties or whatever else, scammers, right? They'd call us on the phone. Now they can just set up a Facebook account, pose as some collection agency, you know, they could make up anything they want and try to get your personal information. They might say, hey, you know, we need to verify the account. We need to verify it's you. Can you give us your social address? mother's maiden name, all that crap, and here you are typing it in. That could happen. All they really need to know is some debt, but they could even make something up too. You don't know. They could say, hey, we're collecting on a debt from T-Mobile. And you might say, well, I never had T-Mobile, but you might give them this information anyway, and now it's all just typed out. So that's one problem. The other is it's just another way to harass you potentially. You know, they have the text messaging now, they can call you, they can send you letters, they can hit you up on Facebook and God knows whatever other social media platforms. Now, if there's any positive side, I tried to find maybe a positive. The only thing I could think of is, so say again, you did make a mistake, you've got a collection and now you wanna take care of it, right? Well, a lot of times they will let you settle for less than the actual account is and that's, usually how it goes. They'll even offer you, hey, 
we'll settle this for like 30% because they just want to get some money in the door, especially the older it gets. Now in the past, if you tried to work with these people, again, they're pretty unethical and they can kind of do whatever they want. So maybe they would like tell you on the phone, yeah, you know, it'll be settled for 20% or whatever, just give us a payment. You give them a payment and suddenly the deal's no longer on the table. They call you the next week for the rest. And you had to be really careful about trying to get it in writing from them what you were going to settle it for. Well, now that it's all on written record, if it's either through text message or maybe again, like on Facebook through Messenger or something, there at least you have like a hard documentation if they do offer to settle it, you don't have to hassle them like, okay, before I give you any money, I need you to email me a release or something. You'd have to be pretty savvy. Not a lot of people are gonna do that. At least if it's through text message or messenger, it's at least recorded. So you could say, okay, you know, I'm ready to settle this. I will offer whatever. And if they say, okay, that's fine. I guess that's one potential benefit. So to me, it seems like there might be enough benefits to outweigh the negatives. Now, the new rules do say that you have to be able to opt out of this. So just like any other like text message that you get that's advertising, a lot of times if you text back stop, it'll unsubscribe you or whatever. The new rules say that they have to allow that as well. And again, like on Facebook, you could just easily block them. You know, that's pretty easy no matter who contacts you. Same with the text messages. And again, in either case, you could just ignore it too if you wanted to. So I just wanted to make you guys aware that those are some updates to the rules. So again, if you are in that position, if you've made some mistakes in the past, don't be surprised if these people try to track you down on social media or using your phone to try to text you. So those are our three stories this week, guys. What are your thoughts on everything we talked about? Have you got retention offers? What do you think about WOW Airlines coming back? And what do you think about these new rules for debt collection agencies? Let everybody know what you think down below. If you guys have any other comments or questions, please do leave them down below. I try to get to every single one. If you'd like to get in touch, here's my social media links, which you can find down in the description as well. And last, before we go, guys, if you enjoy straightforward, to the point content like this, where we talk about credit card points and miles, make sure to leave the video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Pretty easy and free ways to help support the channel. That's all I've got for you this time, guys. See you at the next one. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to drop a comment down below and give the video a thumbs up. Here's some other videos that I think you'll really like. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. And I'm on Facebook and Twitter as well. See you at the next one.